Welcome back, Amanda. It's good to have you. Thanks. It's good to be here. Yeah, this is fun. I'm excited about this series to see what all you guys have to say. Um, so will you just introduce yourself just briefly and maybe just for the context of our global work, um, just share a, a little bit about the regions of, um, you know, the our country and then other countries that you serve? Sure. So I'm Amanda Purvis, um, not related to Karen. Uh, I just want to put <laughs> good distinction. I, I need to put that out there. Um, I live and work from Colorado and have lived here most of my life. I am a mom to five kiddos hmm. and social worker uh, and came to the Institute because I fell in love with TBRI um, before we even had kids and um, basically stalked um, Karen and... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trained TBRI in the state of Colorado um, and in child welfare for many years um, before coming to the Institute. And I now have been at the Institute for six years and I support our work in Latin America and Asia, um, also in Africa. Um, and then in the U.S., I oversee all of the amazing practitioners and work that's happening in Louisiana and Mississippi and Colorado. Um, I would say those are my main places in the U S. Awesome. It's, 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 even though I hear it all the time, it's so fun to hear about just all the places we are and, and even just more about what we're doing. It's so fun. So you said that you became interested in TBRI before you ever had kids. Was it a natural thing for you to parent this way? Has it required some effort? It is absolutely not a natural thing for me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> I, um, I actually get really jealous of people when they're like, oh, this is like how I parent and now I have language for it. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, not same. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, absolutely not natural. And I have known about it for at least a decade and I'm still working on it every single day. And it is not what immediately comes out of me if I'm not being mindful. <laughs> same, a hundred percent the same. <laughs> so as you were learning, what, was there a specific principle you gravitated towards? Do you have a favorite that you, you lean on? I mean, we know it's a comprehensive package, but, I think we each kind of lean on one thing to in our distress, maybe. What's your favorite? My favorite is the connecting um, principles. And I think I lean on those. Obviously, I believe they're the foundation of TBRI. And if we get that, then all the other things will fall into place. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's my favorite because it's what I crave. Um, oh. as a human being, um, and it's what probably I lacked. And so it's my favorite because I, I need it the most. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it um, easy for you? It is easy for me until things get hard. Like, so, um, I, I love connecting. I feel like I am, um, like a natural, like I love to connect with anybody. Um, yeah. but with, in parenting, when, when things get rough, my history says that we disconnect. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's when it does become more difficult for me. And I really have to lean into the idea of bringing a child closer and working on connection when there are like hard times. Yeah, absolutely. I completely understand that. I, I think I've almost mastered instrumental care. <laughs> so connecting is not my easiest, but it is, it is, the one that I practice the most for sure. Yeah. Um, what about within our principles, right? We have strategies. Do you have a go-to strategy that that is is maybe natural for you or is something that's become natural because you know, like this is kind of the thing that works even with just one kid or, or all your kids, whichever. Do you have a favorite strategy that you lean on? Um, I have a couple. I think with in connecting, um, I would say specifically healthy touch is something that's very natural to me and with people that I have relationships with and specifically with my kids. Mm -hmm. um, 
I would say I use that the most um, in terms of connecting with them. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously, that looks different based on the child and the time and all of those things. Um, Mm -hmm. And then the other one that I think is really powerful that when I pay attention to it, when I'm mindful of it, I see such a difference is that voice, you know, Mm -hmm. um, tone, volume and cadence. Um, because I am naturally a yeller. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Even, even when I'm not mad, I'll be like, what are you doing? You know, like, yeah. <laughs> like, um, and I can ruin the day with my right. voice tone. Um, yeah. and so when I really pay attention to that, I see such a difference. And so that's a huge one for me. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause I'm not a yeller. Um, but literally a few days ago, one of my kids said, you're being dismissive with your voice. And I was like, oh, <laughs> that's <laughs> cool. Glad you have the verb, the verbiage for that, because that's just what I wanted to hear right now. But yeah, voice tone is wild, right? Like it is amazing how much it can it can impact what we have going on and what we're doing. What about a strategy that is and that might be voice tone for you, but that is hard. But, you know, like, gosh, if I could do it, it'll it'll pay off? Um, I think for me in terms of connecting, it would be the voice tone one. Um, Mm -hmm. In terms of like, when we think about like our ecological strategies, I think I'm naturally pretty good on structure. And so I can like create an environment Mm -hmm. um, that is conducive to connecting and staying calm and self-regulation. But when I'm outside of the environment that I've created. So for example, like when life happens, right. (laughs) Daily. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, I think that, uh, I really struggle when my kids are in an environment that I don't have control over. Um, Mm -hmm. and I want to create, (laughs) so for example, I have a lot of teenagers right now and I don't unfortunately get to have much control over the environments that, they are in a lot of times. Um, and so that's really hard for me, um, to see them struggling when I know that there are environmental things that they could do, like, for example, not eat like hot Cheetos and Mountain Dew for lunch. Right. Uh, (laughs) And then like, it turns out you won't be a jerk when you come home at three o'clock, if you eat healthy food at lunch, um, or, you know, you might actually make it through your shift at work if you don't just drink soda all day. And then, right. <laughs> so yeah. like, some of those things around, like, if, um, if I'm not in control, which turns out I'm not in control of anything. <laughs> these days. It's hard though. It's so hard that we were talking to Troy earlier and our listeners will have already heard this episode, but, um, we were talking about coaching through the lens of TBRI. And one of the things we chatted about was things like basketball, right? So I wanted my kids to play basketball. That was a thing. I coached them. But the gym is so dysregulating because it's echoey, all those balls bouncing everywhere, the people yelling, the running, the bumping into. And it's like, there's actually no way I can fix this environment (laughs) whatsoever to make it conducive for success for this child like it's it's just not going to happen so it's so hard when um there are things we can't control at all and then the things we can like you could still pack your kids a lunch but it's going to be hot cheetos and mountain dew right like it's it's so tricky when everything falls outside of what, what we can do and then we're we need to be the soft place to land um have you ever needed a redo would you, would you be willing to share with us a time in your parenting? Cause I'm uh, the queen of redos. Uh, I get a lot of practice giving them. So I'm wondering if you have a time you were willing to share and no pressure. Yeah. Um, so it's 10 AM and I've already probably had five redos today. <laughs> so um, have I ever? Yes. Every <laughs> single day. I feel um, that. Yeah. So I would say for me, like a pattern of what I need <laughs> redos is um, any time that we're in a hurry is a really, it I dysregulate. Um, so if we're late, so for example, this morning, I had to be at the doctor at a certain time. So I needed to drop the littles off at school by a certain time to get to the doctor. And of course, mm-hmm. this is the morning that like, <laughs> my daughter's hat broke that she was while we were walking out the door. So then, you know, 
her outfit didn't work. So then she figured out a new hat and, you know, like all the things, the normal Mm -hmm. things that were happening were happening. Um, but I had a deadline. And so I was in a rush, even though we were not late for school. Um, and so I like yelled at her when she was like, Nope, we can't leave. I have to change my outfit because, (laughs) and I was like, you are not changing your outfit. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Just get in the car. (laughs) You'll live without the hat. Yep. So I yelled at her um, and she looked right in my eyeballs and went and changed her clothes. Uh, Oh, cool. (laughs) Which as you can imagine, made me feel really calm. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) So my son said, um, you should go pull the car out and take some deep breaths. Cause I think he saw me spiraling and no, I'm not, I think uh, I know. He's right. So, um, I pulled the car out and then, you know, they both got in the car literally probably two minutes later. <laughs> it was not, it was, turns out it wasn't the end of the world. Right. Um, and she got in the car, um, and was obviously mad because I had yelled at her. So for me, when, when my kids are mad, no one will sit in the front seat. Right. <laughs> you become the chauffeur. Yes. Okay. And that that's like my indication in case I didn't pick up on it sooner. Like we're so mad at you that right. this coveted seat in the car <laughs> that we fight over is going to remain empty. Um so they both got in the back and uh it probably took me like to be honest, most of the drive to school mm-hmm. <laughs> before I was able to just like you know, turn to her and say, I'm sorry, I yelled at you. Um, Mm -hmm. It actually doesn't matter if I'm three minutes late to this appointment this morning. Um, And I'm glad that you felt confident enough to put on something that you feel good in for the Mm -hmm. day. And I'm sorry, I yelled. And um, she said, it's fine. I'm used to it. (laughs) (laughs) Which just makes you feel so great. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. It's, I I know like we talk about empowering our kids and doing all of the things to empower their bodies and routines and schedules. But if I'm off, like the ship is going down. Right. So it's like, it's so hard. My girls now they tease me because my response to that was that we're going to get everywhere. We're going 15 minutes early and um, we'll just sit in the car and that'll be fine. And now they talk about like the hours of their life that I wasted sitting in the car because I couldn't handle the stress of being late. So it's just, it's so hard. And hurrying is like a horrible place for, I know me to be for sure. Um, Do you have a memory of, or, or even a recent memory when you thought, oh my gosh, this thing actually worked. I know like, especially early on for me, I had those moments of like, this isn't going to work. And then it would like, do you have a specific memory of a time when you were like, Oh my gosh, this thing actually worked. Just like I have redos every day. I think I have those moments every day of like, Oh, oh yeah, Amanda, like when you do this, right. Mm-hmm. It's super <laughs> effective. Um, so yeah, I would say daily, but again, especially because I have teenagers. Um, I think one of the things that I am learning in my practice of TBRI and I, I think even saying practice of TBRI is really intentional on my part mm-hmm. because I think oftentimes we talk about implementing TBRI as if like, there's a certain way to do it and then you've done it and you're right. like, and you're done. Yeah. <laughs> um, but for me, it is a, like a daily practice that looks different every day based on where I'm at, where my kids are at our environment, et cetera. Um, so for me, um, even last night, like I have a teenage daughter who is upset with me right now. Um, and she's upset with me. Uh, like it's been a few days that Mm -hmm. (laughs) she's upset. Um, and last night, you know, I made dinner and had everyone come sit down and, uh, she, you know, just sat there, like she didn't want to eat what I had made, um, Mm -hmm. which wasn't because she didn't like it or, you know, it was just a, a statement for her. Right. Sure. Um, and I was like, very mindful in the moment. And I was like, this is a way that you can connect with her. Mm -hmm. So I just looked at her and said, like, is there something that I could make you that would help you to feel better right now? Is there anything like that I could do separate from what we're all eating? 
which historically is like, that's not a thing that I do. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Like we all eat whatever we're eating as a family. Um, Mm -hmm. and, and that's always worked for us. Like we don't have, you know, a lot of those like food issues. And so it's been fine. Um, but this was not about the food. (laughs) Right. So, um, and I was in that moment able to be, you know, mindful of that situation. I said, is there anything else that I can make for you? And she said, no. Um, and I said, well, if there's like anything that you would like to make, please feel free. And so she got up and made herself, you know, some food, but then she came back down and sat with us, um, mm. which I, I didn't think would happen. You know, I thought yeah. she would take her food either out to the deck or go, you know, to her room or something. And she didn't, she came back down and sat with us. And I just said, oh, I'm so glad, you know, that you're going to eat with us. And so we had, you know, a normal dinner and once, um, the other kids went to bed, um, I went down, you know, to her room and I just said, Hey, I know that you're upset with me and you're allowed to be upset, but I just want to make sure that if there's anything that you want to talk about, not around everybody else, um, that I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to talk. Mm -hmm. And again, this was a statement, I think, because normally, like, I always say like, I cannot be nice to you after nine o'clock. Like Mm -hmm. I, (laughs) it turns out I'm done. Like Mm -hmm. I'm out of words. I'm out of energy. I'm so like, when we all go to bed, if you have more things you need after nine, you should probably work on that yourself. (laughs) I'm not Like I'm done. Um, And so even by me going down there, you know, at nine 30 or 10 o'clock at night and saying, and so she did like, she opened up and she shared some things with me and as anyone who parents teens know, like usually around 10 o'clock at night Uh is when they're, they're ready to talk to you about things. Um, and so I think it was just this idea that I was willing to connect despite like her working really hard for multiple days, um, to push me away. Um, and for me to know and be mindful enough that this, is, this isn't about me. This mm-hmm. is about all the other things that are going on right. in her life right now. And so I don't actually have to make it personal. Um, I can just show her over and over and over again, that I want to be with her and that I want to connect with her. Um, even over the weekend, she had a basketball tournament and, I was cheering her on and sending video clips to everybody. And like, Mm -hmm. and she, she didn't want, you know, well, what she said was, I don't want you there. Um, but I knew that wasn't true. Um, and so even last night, like when we were talking, she was like, thank you for coming to my tournament. And, you know, even though I told you, I didn't want you there. And so Mm -hmm. it's, um, I think, especially in this teenage stage, um, the, the correcting part of things ends up being like this long game, right? (laughs) Like like there, there isn't a lot of like, and not that we can't do like those quick and, you know, playful engagement type. Oh, let's not talk like that. Or, you know, like that type of correcting, but some of those like longer lessons and teachings and discipline that we Mm -hmm. end up engaging in with teenagers. For me, at least my experience has been it's been a long game. It's not like mm-hmm. a, let me sit down and have a talk with you for 20 minutes. Cause they just mm-hmm. tune you out. Um, yeah. so it's engaging in that dance of connecting when they are pushing you away yeah. um, with everything they have that I have just seen be effective, even when they don't want it to be. Effective. Right. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And I think it takes like, it's interesting because you have to wonder if like, part of it is our growth over time that we don't anymore feel the need to like hustle hustle in and solve like this is a bigger problem than this moment we're going to meet the need in the moment that's obvious but like some of that underlying stuff is still percolating and um do you, I'm I'm so curious because I um struggle with taking things personally so if something feels personal to me I I do remind myself all the time like you know this is partly about you, but it's not all about you. Um, and then try to re-engage. Do you have something you tell yourself? Like, cause it can be hurtful, right? Like, I mean, the, there, there is hurt that comes in our direction. And so is there something you do in those moments to remind yourself that it's bigger than just about you? That's a great question. Um, 
I honestly think that like you talked about our growth as individuals, um, that's something that I have seen in my own personal growth around, and it has to do with that control piece that I talked about earlier, that Mm -hmm. as I've realized that as my children get older, I basically have zero control over Mm -hmm. what's happening in their lives, which is terrifying. Right. Um, but also a little bit freeing in the sense that it's given me permission to say, oh, this actually is probably not about you. Just like you have no control over, you know, a lot of the situations that they're in and, Mm -hmm. um, the experiences that they're having these days. Um, that also gives me the freedom to say, and (laughs) this probably isn't about you. It's about all those other things. Whereas when they were younger and I could control their environment more, um, I mean, I even think about like when my kids were younger and they would get sick, which turns out all the kids in all the world get sick all the time. Right. Um, like, yes. I have this idea that like, oh, this is a, um, I have failed in some way. Like I forgot oh. to have them wash their hands or I didn't oh give them their vitamins or I didn't, you know, and so then it was like, let me create this environment where they can't get sick. Um, and so I, like I'm just telling you that because that's how much of a control freak. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> so, so now I feel like this is a big journey that mm-hmm. I'm on. Um, and so the idea of it being about me has suddenly become like, oh, this was actually never about you. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing that I am frequently saying to my children, because I need to remind myself and especially in moments like these is you're a whole beautiful person on your own. Mm -hmm. And I just like, I'm here to support you, but Mm -hmm. you don't need me to be complete. Um, And so like, especially for my teenagers, because they want to be whole people on their own, right? Like that is developmentally where they're at. Mm -hmm. Um, And so when I say that to them, I think it empowers them to, to own it. Um, But I also think it, reminds me that they are whole people. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yes. And that, and they're so capable of so many things. And I, I always think, you know, mine are out of high school now, but like the entire chaos of their day that, that they were constantly trying to mitigate and, and manage and deal with whatever the pressures were, social, educational, driving, whatever it was going on. Um, that if it came home and it all landed on me, at least they brought it to their safest place, right? Like, so, so at least if, if I can keep it, you know, if I can keep my head focused on this is an expression of a need, right? Like all of this that I literally had, like you said, zero control over in their day, then that, that kind of helps me to go, okay, well, let's start with a snack. Like <laughs> this seems like a really easy place to just show you that I can help with nurture or whatever it is, but it is so hard when they get older and you don't have that influence over, um, you know, all of the things there's, there's so many, and it's natural, right? Like that is a natural developmental stage that they are pulling away and others influence should be a different thing, but oh, it's hard. It is so hard. Okay. I have some rapid fire questions for you. Are you ready? Ready or not. Okay. What is your favorite food? Mac and cheese. I'm just going to tell you my first thought. (laughs) Mac and cheese. (laughs) Like homemade mac and cheese or like Kraft mac and cheese? Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, Favorite way you like your coffee? I don't really drink coffee. Oh. Sorry. um, (laughs) Tea? I'm just kidding. You like tea? (laughs) And I put sweetened condensed milk in it and I do a coconut oolong. Oh my. Well, okay. That's probably is really good, but not having coffee makes me sad. Um, Walk up song or theme song. Today. Yes. It's, I wrote it down because (laughs) I had to try to think of a really um, appropriate song because normally I would say something very inappropriate. Okay. Um, for the podcast, <laughs> <laughs> I would say good as H E double hockey sticks by Lizzo okay. or heart like a truck by Lainey Wilson. Okay. I'm going to go listen to them because you know that I am not cool in these areas. And so I'll have to go check them out. Uh, vacation spot. Everywhere. 
anyway, anywhere. no, I mean a, a beach. Okay. Anywhere with sand and water. Mm -hmm. Cool. Hobby. Yoga? Does that count? That counts. Yeah. Okay. Heck yeah. Yoga. I, I kind of thought you might say um, like your plants. It is a job and I even oh. have a plant day once, but, but it's a job I love. Okay. Like, okay. Yeah. Okay. So yoga and lastly, sports team. Go Denver Nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought was coming. <laughs> awesome. Amanda, thanks so much for hanging with us today. This has been so much fun and I can't wait for our listeners to hear all of your wisdom. All right. Well, thanks for having me, friend. I'm jealous yeah. that you get to talk to all of our amazing colleagues about oh, all these fun things. It's so fun. 